When picking a CPU cooler for your PC, I'd ask that you stay away from this and don't even think about this. So I guess I really only recommend using three brands of coolers. If you choose anything from this list I just gave you, you won't regret it. This could not be easier. Today's video is an easy to follow guide on CPU tower coolers, where we'll explore my favorites to keep your processor running cool and efficient without draining your wallet. I've used quite a few CPU coolers in my years of PC building, so I figured I'd list some of the best ones here. We've got budget-friendly options that come in under $30, but still offer exceptional cooling. Then we'll move on to more mid-tier coolers up to the $60 price point that offer more features and better performance. Finally, I've got a few high-end coolers that offer top-tier performance, but still come in under hundred bucks. Cooling your CPU is very important, and there's tons of options out there. This first category is to show you how affordable quality air coolers can be. When picking a CPU cooler for your PC, I'd ask that you stay away from this and don't even think about this. I realize these companies include their box coolers with their more entry-level CPUs, so obviously they've tested them and proved they work. However, I would ask that you don't pass up on this first category of CPU cooler if you're thinking about using one of these boxed options because these are under $30 and give you exceptional performance increase over something like this. I've put together my top three choices for the budget category of CPU cooler, and I've used each and every one of these. Now, some of them even have dedicated reviews here on the channel, which I'll link below as always. First up is the Thermalright Assassin X120 V2. I use the version one, but basically they're the same. It's got four six millimeter heat pipes with an upgraded cold plate from the V1. They've also updated the 120 millimeter fan with a max speed of 1500 RPM, achieving this under 25.6 decibels of noise. This keeps things nice and quiet while also maintaining good cooling performance. They include a matte anodized top plate for that clean build design. They also offer this with an addressable RGB fan as well, if that's your thing. You can grab the non-RGB model over on Amazon for $18.19 USD. If you want to add an RGB fan, that'll only cost you $2 more. The next budget cooler is the ID Cooling SE214 XT. This is another four-pipe heatsink with a 120mm ARGB fan with a max speed of 1500 RPMs. The difference here is it comes in black or white to match your build. Now, the cap on this one is plastic, if that matters. The Thermalright Assassin is aluminum and feels a little bit more premium. The standard 214 XT in black can be found over on Amazon for $17.99. If you want it in white, it's only a dollar more. The last cooler on the budget list hardly seems budget at all, and it's Arctic's brand new Freezer 36. This is a single tower cooler with an aluminum top plate and two 120 millimeter PWM fans with a max 1800 RPM. These are easily installed using Arctic's quick clip system. I highlighted it in my review video too. Now this cooler runs absolutely silent and they also include a tube of MX6 thermal paste in the box, which is my go-to for every one of my PC builds. So that was just a bonus for me. The Arctic 36 starts at $25.40, but I would opt for the blacked out model because of the design aesthetic and it still comes in under $30. In addition to the standard and black models, Arctic offers this cooler in black or white with RGB too. I have a small disclaimer for this one. I'm only recommending this cooler while prices stay low. Once the initial run sells out, if they decide to raise prices, well, let's just say I've got some other options in that price range. This is a perfect transition into the mid-range segment. This tops out at $60, but it does come with increased performance and features that you don't get with the more entry-level coolers. Once again, I'll give you three options, but the difference here is I haven't used every single one of these coolers. I just matched my desired performance with each pricing tier. Now these coolers focus on cooling efficiency, noise levels, and compatibility. The first up is the Thermalrite PS120 SE. It's a dual tower cooler with two 120 millimeter fans, seven heat pipes, and 280 watts of heat dissipation. It's similar to the Assassin X120. It just bumps everything up a notch. The only thing that scares me with this one is if you have tall RAM sticks, it may interfere with the clearance of the fan. But for $35.90, I think it's worth the risk. Next up is the ID Cooling Frozen A620. 
This one has six heat pipes, two 120 millimeter fans pushing 78.25 CFM of airflow at 29.85 dBA max, handling up to 270 watts of heat. This has a very similar look to the thermal right cooler I just recommended. However, you don't get to see those heat sink fins because of the plastic covering it up. Amazon has this listed for $44.99, but if you wanna add RGB, they've got that too. This will cost you $59.99 for a black or white fan with a cool ringed capped effect. The last cooler in this category is at the top of the price list, but I have personally used it and absolutely loved it. It's the Deep Cool AK500 Zero Dark. This offers nothing but performance with five heat pipes with an offset to allow any and all RAM clearance, 240 watts of heat dissipation, and an ultra quiet fan running at a max speed of 1850 RPMs. You can grab the AK500 for as low as $49.99, but it's $5 more for the white model and $10 more for the Zero Dark. I'd go for the upgraded ones just for the look. These coolers bridge the gap between performance and affordability catering to casual gamers or enthusiasts alike. This will provide you with enough performance to cool those more high-end CPUs, while still keeping your overall costs relatively low. Cost savings is something that high-end coolers are not. This category offers premium features and performance that you can't get unless you're willing to pay up. Most of the coolers in this segment have a dual fan, dual tower setup. My three choices are all the same brand and are honestly super impressive to me so there's no reason to shop anywhere else in this price tier. Just over the $60 mark is the Deep Cool AK620 Zero Dark. It's a dual tower, dual fan cooler with six copper heat pipes and 260 watts of heat dissipation. The fans are super quiet and powerful, spinning up to 1850 RPMs, yet creating under 26 dBA of noise. Installation is very simple, and the Zero Dark model looks great in any blacked out build. All models for the AK620 are currently selling over on Amazon for $64.99. So you're just getting into that premium pricing category with this choice. The next model is one I haven't tried myself yet, but I might need to change that because I saw it at CES and I've been dying to check it out ever since. It's Deep Cool's Assassin 4S. It's a dual tower cooler, but only has one 140 millimeter fan inside. It's got seven heat pipes, and thanks to the 140 millimeter fan being taller than the heat sink, it cools the VRMs too. The design ensures total RAM compatibility and it comes in black or white, so it can match any build. The best price I could find was over on Newegg for $79.99. I will warn you about one thing though. It requires 164 millimeters of clearance to fit in your case. That's the same warning I have for the last cooler on this list. The Deep Cool Assassin 4 is the 4S's bigger brother. I know it looks like a huge brick, but it's actually a dual tower cooler with seven heat pipes and it's got a 120 millimeter and 140 millimeter fan stuffed inside. I was fortunate enough for Deep Cool to send one over for a build video that I did. And I honestly was going to do a dedicated review video. In fact, if you're interested in that, let me know down in the comments and I'll make it happen. Actually, scratch that. I'm just gonna do it anyway. It does carry a hefty price tag of 100 US dollars but it's cooling and silent operation are second to none. Over the past few years, I've grown to enjoy CPU tower coolers more than liquid cooling. The simplicity, price, and reliability, I mean, it's only a block of metal and a fan, can be very enticing to new and seasoned PC builders. Like I said at the beginning, I've tried a lot of new products when it comes to air cooling, but most end up falling short. So I guess I really only recommend using three brands of coolers, but there's a reason for this. Performance, and price. Isn't that really what it's all about? The best recommendation I have when shopping for a CPU tower cooler is to select one that fits your budget and performance needs based on the categories I provided. This is why I gave a few options for each pricing tier. If you choose anything from this list I just gave you, you won't regret it. This could not be easier. Remember, all the coolers I talked about today will be linked below in the description. Now they're affiliate links, but they don't cost you anything extra. It just helps me keep the lights on and continue providing you with informative content. Thanks for watching. And if you got value from today's video, give it a like down below, or even better, share it with your friends who might also need help with their next PC build, like purchasing an air cooler. That's all for now. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, but we found a way to choose right from wrong. We found
I'm too strict to go on together.